recovery. Recovery. What is recovery? Is it the opposite of uncovering? What does recovery taste like? Is this a recovery? Maybe there's a recovery in here. All this and more on this episode of Things That Nobody Really Cares About. Well, as usual, I've discovered something I find a little bit rubbish. And I'm putting my neck on the line so all you internet winch storians can keyboard warrior me over it. So I'm almost at a thousand subscribers. That means I might receive a few cents a month for some of these videos. And owning two 70 series Land Cruisers generally takes its toll on bank accounts. So if you can sympathize, press the subscribe button. Anyway, back to the feature presentation. Now this video is about recovery aprons, recovery blankets, towels, those things that go over ropes when you pull stuff. So what do they do? Well, you're supposed to put them over your rope when you're pulling stuff so that in case the rope snaps, all that potential energy becoming kinetic energy is absorbed by this mysterious orange thing on your rope and I think they're rubbish. Here's why. And over here, we got Mr. Chop Chop. Bring it. Yeah, see that one's airborne. Oh, it's completely off. As soon as it came yep. off the ground. Yep, off straight away. The other one's still on Oh! Now the first problem with them is that most people don't actually use them properly. They think this weird little apron thing on its own is gonna do a magical job of stopping your rope dead in its tracks. So what I think you're supposed to do is fill them with stuff, like soil, to weigh them down so that the rope falls out of the air rather than flinging back. And as you just saw, this doesn't seem to work very well. Here's a visual representation of the difference between a full and empty sack. So would you rather be smashed in the face by something light very fast, or something heavy slowly? Either way, it doesn't make much difference. I'll start by adding a disclaimer. I'm not suggesting anyone use this method for recovery. And if you do, it's not my fault if anything bad happens. Anyway, here's my idea. This is a one ton lifting strap. And the idea is to bridge around the area that you're gonna put these weird plastic orange aprons with the hope of when the rope snaps, it'll get caught. So with that in mind, let's see how this testing is gonna take place. So here's the idea. Instead of, or as well as, I'm going to put a strap to bridge the most common snapping points, or those snapping points that would cause the most damage if they broke. And here's the setup I've come up with. Firstly, a snatch block, because I don't want a load of experimental nonsense to fly back at my car. Secondly, an attachment to something. In this case, a tree. But you can use something like a big rock, another car, a building, a big bag of tea, your mother. So the thing we're trying to avoid having thrown back in your face is this little setup here. Because naturally, a kilogram of metal to the face is not a very good look. So here's the plan. So the idea here is when something snaps, it's not gonna go further than the length of the rope. Over here is typically where you'd put these weird little apron things so that when something snaps, the rope folds back on itself rather than flying in one direction. But in practice, this doesn't really work. The other thing I'm going to do is add a known breaking point using this. Because obviously this is going to snap at a much less attention than the rest of the stuff. So as a control test, I'm going to snap some stuff without anything to see if we can do better. So there's a few places that these sorts of setups are likely to fail. Firstly is at the winch rope here. If you don't look after them or they get UV damaged, they're gonna snap. The other one is if your strap breaks, but this is pretty unlikely. 
As it stands now, there's three tensions applied to this. First one is coming back here, and the other two are going up each leg of the strap. And as we've attached our weak rope here, we know that it's going to snap here, sending a kilogram this way. So let's see what happens. Now, as you can see, that would have been pretty dangerous if you're on the receiving end of it. Now, for the sake of consistency, I'm going to simulate using one of these apron things. I don't own one because I think they're rubbish, but let's do a side-by-side -side comparison of what is almost the same thing. So here it is set up in the exact same way with one addition. Now what an amazing difference. I think both ends of the rope landed in almost exactly the same spot, except now I have a dirty hoodie. Thanks for nothing, weird orange cape things. So this is what I'm going to be testing now. I've put a strap at either end of the brake point. There. And when I bought these straps, I thought they were loop ends rather than a whole loop. So I've put some tape here to make it act like the intended product. So let's see if there's a difference in this setup. So what have we learned from this one? Well, for a start, the rope is here instead of all the way over there. which means that everything would have been contained in this little area, which should be nowhere near anybody anyway. So the next and final test will be with the braking link in an alternative place. But from what I can see so far, it's pretty successful. One thing to notice is that it only flew so far because the strap became unwound from the tree, but that stole a lot of the energy out of the braking rope. But as you can see, the ropes never came detached. So for the last test, I'm gonna simulate a brake happening at the shackle. Before, the brake link was here. Now I've put it here so there's a piece of metal flying in each direction which could be argued as the most dangerous scenario you can find because there's a chance of getting smashed in the face from both ends. So as you can see, the rope is still attached. You could probably still pull with this to the point where the strop snaps, which I think on this is either one or two tons. It's one ton. So what does all this mean? Well, I've preempted some questions, and here they are. Why might this be better than an apron? Well, I think we've seen why. From what I can see, these aprons aren't much more than a visual deterrent, and I often see them used incorrectly. In most cases, they'll just put it over the rope without any weights on it. And even with the weight, I don't think there's that much advantage. They don't seem to improve the impact trajectory or magnitude. Once again, here's the representation of the difference between a full and empty apron thing. And as you can see, we pretty much noticed that today. Next question. What if it's a big recovery and the strap also snaps? Well, the whole point of this setup is to reduce the energy being thrown back at you. Now, most winch ropes and recovery straps have a load rating much higher than that of the strap we're using to connect the two. But once they snap, a lot of energy is lost in the recoil of the strap, which would then be caught by the much weaker strap, which would then further reduce the energy. And as you can see, the result we saw was that the dangerous bits didn't end up anywhere near anything that could cause any damage. And if I was doing a straight pull, it wouldn't have gone anywhere near my car. And finally, the last predicted thing. 
but an apron is better because you can wear it and store small things in it and use it as a bag. Well, it's supposed to be a safety device, not a fashion accessory. Although some people do look fabulous wearing them. Anyway, as per usual, if you disagree, you are more than welcome to argue your case in the comments below. I would also like to reiterate that I am not suggesting using this as a safety device. This is something that I thought of off the top of my head, and it just so happens to work in the testing scenario I just came up with. And if you end up decapitating yourselves, it's not my fault. Now one final thing I'd like to add is that this was all done with a one ton sling. It was two meters long. You can pick these up for next to nothing at your local hardware store. However, if you want to support my channel, I will sell you one for $50, which is a massively overinflated price. But just letting you know due to the transparency of the channel. Find out how down there. Anyway, this concludes my testing of things.